So this week, following on from the Phase 1 video, I'm going to jump right into everything we're going to be getting in Phase 2, any details people might have potentially missed, anything I think you need to know as a guild or a person coming in to play Ashes of Creation during this testing phase, but without rambling on anymore, I'm just going to jump right amongst the content and get amongst everything. So first off is biomes, what are we actually getting when it comes to biomes? We aren't getting anything too new, however we are getting both the Sandskull Desert and the Vandergaard tropics expanded so we'll definitely see some more content within them zones just expands that testing phase out just a little bit not too much distress intrepid to give us a bigger scope of the world and kind of give us more stuff to explore and for both pve and pvp there's going to be some fairly decent content to get amongst there so getting into nodes now now what are we going to be seeing with nodes well nodes will be increasing to be able to level up to four and they're going to have two unique layouts new node systems that they've said we're going to be seeing is node sieges including node death vassal ship free olds, instant housing player shops the economic election type more memorial commissions and they're even gonna add in some additional service buildings so just that alone is an immense amount of content to explore to test to get involved in and it's definitely going to be more than enough to increase and, and you know continue through the testing phases phase two is definitely with phase one especially if there's a wipe for phase two which could be likely that's that there's a lot of content and there's going to be a lot of fun to be had there as well as that we're going to be getting two new races which is the Veiloon and the Diner. this is also the phase where we'll be getting the rogue with the stealth system that's going to be pretty interesting a lot of things are going to change in the game one of my main builds has rogue as part of it so i'll definitely be switching up for that i personally hope they use a wipe for phase two that all phase one's wiped and we start fresh with phase one and two content probably the best way to do it in my honest opinion and when it comes to the arch types at this point they do want on about 20 plus abilities 10 plus passives and 30 skill modes with each of the arch type trees which is more and more depth to the character development in pve and pvp so adding all of what i've just said there and you can already see the game expanding out with more content more fun to be had and obviously mainly we are testing but even though we are testing obviously we're all there to have a bit of fun so sometimes we'll you know do the content in the game but i imagine we're gonna have to make our own fun whether it's guild talk tournaments and pvp matches seeing who can kill a raid boss the fastest or hit up the grand dungeon these are all going to be things we're doing as a guild but yeah that you know just adding in these things you can just see how much it's going to expand out and how much content we're actually going to get and that's without even getting into the new weapons in this phase and that's going to be dual wielded daggers the two-handed spear the two-handed mace and the two-handed axe and the gear progression for the characters will also be increased in phase two so you're going to be seeing stuff with gem and sockets ascension even tempering so there we go again just expanding out and i don't really think people understand how much more content is coming with these but phase two is really really going to be fun i think phase one's kind of going to be a bit of testing bit of service stability obviously queue time checking that out um it's probably going to be a, a big queuing simulator and some content with half our servers that are up and down that's genuinely like what i would expect to happen in phase one but once we get through that it should be stable near the end we should have had to explore but phase two once we get near that at the end it should be coming to being a lot more stable and then we should have a lot more fun with phase two I, I genuinely like i said before not to repeat myself i really hope they do reset the servers and wipe when it comes to pvp content we're not gonna get too much in this phase compared to how phase one was so when it comes to pvp we are gonna get a little bit more it's not gonna be a mass amount of new pvp content but one of the main ones is node sieges and as we mentioned before the node death and also the introduction of siege vehicles which we did not get in phase one because we will not be sieging in phase one once you get a node in phase one there's no node death so that means you basically keep that and no one can contact test for that node unless they reset or they have a cooldown and kick folk off which is unlikely but at least in phase two we can get involved in the node sieges now i imagine they will be rapidly speeded up and obviously ain't going to be once a month but it's going to be really nice to test out that content and get amongst that because there's a shitload of content there and then when you add in the siege vehicles creating and crafting them the resources it brings in more to the pve side to get to the pvp so there's some quality pvp content there alone which is going to be nice to check out and adding the god spike event 
weapons, the random lawless PvP, the caravans. I mean, it's going to be fairly decent. So I think these node sieges will mix things up and really give us a test of what the game is going to be like. But heading over to the PvE content, when it comes to the PvE content, we're going to be getting some quite exciting systems, to be honest, some fairly decent stuff. So, I mean, it's definitely going to get content there on the PvE side. We're going to be getting free olds. Now, we know free olds are going to be doing everything. You can start testing out your families, really get involved with some personalization, see how these things are working, really become stronger as a guild and make that close-knit unit vibe and have your own, basically, little town if you can get enough of these free olds or potentially you own the node as well. Uh, you're going to follow that with animal husbandry breeding. Now, this is going to be a huge part of the game for mounts and combat pets and beast of burden, all these other things. So, this is a huge system. Now, how much of that we're going to get, I don't know. Um, I don't think we'll get the full thing nowhere near, but we're going to get a good chunk. Then, you're going to have the artisanship skill trees, party gathering, story arc for the Riverlands, story arcs for the Sandsquall Desert, treasure maps for the Sandsquall Desert, dynamic events for the Sandsquall Desert, and dynamic world dungeons. So, there is an insane amount of PvE coming in here. And to be fair, if you're the PvP guy thinking, oh, that's a bit shitty, you know, what about the PvP? Think about all the PvP that's already in Phase 1, then add in the sieges and how we create the own PvP within game. There's going to be more than enough PvP, and even these systems alone are going to bring PvP, whether it's gathering out with your mates, whether it's doing your story arcs, you know, whether it's doing the world dungeons, PvP is consistent. So, the more PvE you add in, in essence, you're bringing more PvP to the game, which is brilliant. Now, finally, to finish off the video, a bit of a short one with some quality of life systems that will be in place for phase two. What we're going to get is additional chat system functions, and one of the best ones for us, I really believe it or not, sadly, I'm super excited for this, is leaderboards. Now, leaderboards are going to be amazing. Obviously, the additional chat system functions, brilliant. I'd like to see more guild functions and, and other things on the go as we go through our two that maybe I haven't mentioned, but having them leaderboards, you know, tracking and who's the best gatherer, tracking who's got the most PvP kills, who's got the most dungeon kills or world boss kills, who's got the highest level in the guild or the highest overall gear score like Archage did. You know, all these leaderboards lets you check where you are as an individual and where your guild is in comparison to the guilds on your servers. This brings competition. You know, there's no windling this, there's no pretending if you're good or you're not good. This can show you where you are and it just brings in that replayability, that reason to push harder. The content's a bit lacking. You've kind of done everything we need to. Well, the next thing is who's on the leaderboards? Let's push even harder. Let's smash this. Let's go at the leaderboards. And there's a constant reason to keep people in that fucking game, in the Alpha 2 testing and not logging off for the more hardcore ones or semi-hardcore. This is very smart for them to have done because a lot of people will specifically go at leaderboards. Our guild will be aiming at leaderboards with, the, with that in mind. Obviously, we did play Front on Liberty. We kind of half assed that beta, but we still came ninth on the server. Um, and there was not many of us playing. We had guys in the top 10 out of the 6,000, you know. So our aim on Ashes is to test, give good feedback, develop the game, really well round off the guild. And, you know, if people ain't fitting, it ain't the guilds, then we'll obviously have to get rid of them, get some new people in, um, and, and mech this close knit unit. And being on the leaderboards and pushing for that is a part of what we're looking to do as a guild and many others in Ashes of Creation. So definitely don't underrate the quality of life changes because that is a huge one um, and it's, it's going to be really nice to get in and that is why I say phase two they should wipe everything for definite and then phase one we've tested it out phase two we come in with all of that content leading us to phase three absolutely amazing so yeah I'm really hyped if you haven't seen my phase one video definitely check it out if you've got a guild that you want to prepare you remember watch it listen to some of the advice in the other videos and, and, and prepare yourself because the more people we have in the more competition the more testing the more fun we're going to have but without going on anymore i will follow this up with a phase three video i really can't wait to actually get in the game and start making the content i want rather than kind of covering the same content everyone else is and have my own swing in it that has been uh, quite difficult for me during ashes creation just constantly covering news and not wanting to kind of make the same videos as everyone else so i've tried to diversify the best i could and make my own style and, and kind of avoid when you know everyone's doing a bit of content yes it's maybe better for my views but i just kind of don't want to copy what everyone else is doing if you aren't subbed subscribe to the channel hit like give it a share a lot more content coming here and if you are looking for the guild we are semi-hardcore with a hardcore roster within looking for specific people we are close near we do not take anybody we do have a high rejection rate but if you think you are on the same vibe as how i speak in my videos or some of the stuff you've maybe seen on the eu recruitment join the discord
Discord and put your application in. We will have a cap number, but we still have some spaces available currently leading to Alpha 2. But without going on anymore, as always, I really do appreciate you watching the video, and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.